Earlier in this series, we covered sexing monitors and how to set their enclosures up for breeding. In this video, I'm going to cover the next step, which is the start of the reproductive cycle in female monitors. This stage is known as cycling in the hobby, but its proper name is vitellogenesis. Before we go any further, now is a good time to point out that vitellogenesis, or cycling, is not ovulation. This is a common error people make, referring to cycling or vitellogenesis as ovulation, probably through familiarity with human reproductive biology, but ovulation in reptiles is timed differently, and I'll go into details about it later in this video series. Vitellogenesis comes from both Latin and Greek and means yolk creation, and the reason for this name becomes clear when you find out what's happening inside the female. Let's start with a bit of boring anatomy. You may recall from episode 2 that the female's reproductive anatomy includes a pair of ovaries and oviducts. Well, what happens in vitellogenesis is that several of the egg cells or ova within the ovaries swell with yolk. So given that most of us don't have access to ultrasound machines, what are the external indicators of this change in the female? Let's find out. One of the earliest signs that a reproductive cycle is about to start is the female monitor displaying a sudden change in appetite. This doesn't always happen, but it's quite common for a female to suddenly lose interest in food before showing any other clear signs of starting a reproductive cycle. Often this is when people first discover that their monitor is, in fact, a female. It's a common occurrence in online monitor groups for someone to post that the monitor which they thought was male, and had therefore called Herbie or some other male name, has suddenly stopped eating after a year or two under their care, and one of the first questions I'll ask is if they're sure it's a male. Food refusal at the start of a cycle can be quite different from the behavior shown by a monitor that simply isn't hungry. Normally, if a monitor isn't hungry because it's eaten recently or is disinterested in the particular food on offer, it'll tongue flick the food and then turn away. When undergoing vitellogenesis, however, Female monitors will often not even show signs of registering that the food is there, as our hormones have completely switched off the feeding response. Nice juiciness. Hmm. Nice. Nice. Watch this female acting as though the food isn't there, even if I wave it around. If I persevere and push it in her face, she'll turn away rather than bite it, which is very unusual for a monitor. Now let's compare this with the same female's normal food response outside of the reproductive cycle. Earlier I mentioned that what is going on inside the female is that some of her ova are developing yolk. Clearly as this continues to happen, we should start seeing external physical signs rather than just changes in behavior. And sure enough, the next sign of a female starting a cycle is a widening of her abdomen, usually right in the middle. When the female is walking, her belly will often hang down quite low. Again, keep in mind that this is a female which has been eating very little or refusing food altogether. I'm going to revisit this photograph that I'd shown earlier, for it shows another thing to look for in a reproductive female, and that is resting in unusual positions to relieve the pressure on her lungs. 
These resting positions usually involve the female supporting her forequarters and hindquarters, but allowing her belly to hang. It should be noted that it's not unusual for monitors of either sex to do this after they've had a large meal. But again, keep in mind that we're talking about a female that is probably refusing food and is still hanging around in these positions several days after her most recent meal. One of the most common positions include the female hanging vertically from a tree, digging her claws in and just allowing her body to sag. Here's a comparison of two different female lace monitors hanging in a similar position. Another favorite position is hanging vertically from the back wall of the enclosure. Earlier I had mentioned that the enlarged abdomen female monitors develop when going through a cycle is a mid-body swelling. This is quite noticeable when they are in this position, as the torso takes on a vague diamond shape, widest the middle. Here are a few shots taken over the years of the same female hanging off the back wall in a similar manner while undergoing patelogenesis during different reproductive events. And here's another comparison between two different females taken many years apart. Again, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes animals will hang like this after a meal. But if you see the same female doing this day after day, even when she isn't feeding, it's usually a sign. The very first female lace monitor I had bred had a particular preferred pose that she rarely adopted when there wasn't something reproductive going on. There was this one part of the mock rock cliff on which she would rest, like this, and if I saw her doing this repeatedly over the course of a few days, I'd know she was starting a new cycle. And just to show how consistent this behavior was, here are a few shots taken over the years of her adopting the same pose at the start of a reproductive cycle. A second female later kept in the same enclosure would also rest like this on occasion, but not as predictably. Here's the first female, and here's the second female. Same enclosure. Same part of the mock rock cliff, different female, same pose. I even saw a female planking at one stage. This is taking hanging her belly to the next level. Another early sign of the start of a reproductive cycle is the female doing test digs. These usually start as tiny little holes, which I call nose holes. The female will push her snout into the substrate as though she's checking temperatures which is most likely what she's actually doing. Eventually, the nose holes start turning into more serious test digs. At this stage in the reproductive cycle, adding new material to the enclosure or to the nest box will usually trigger the female to dig into it to check it out. Watch how vigorously this female is digging into the nest box, and yet this is at the very start of the reproductive cycle still a long way from being due to lay. Females will often dig like this even before they start mating. When I first observed this behavior, it seemed to answer one of the big mysteries of lace monitor reproduction in the wild. Lace monitors nest in termite mountains, and it's quite well known that an adult, presumably the mother, digs out the babies in spring. This is what an excavation looks like in early spring. But no one knew what the triggers were. How did the female know when to return to the mound to release the hatchlings? My hypothesis is that it's accidental, for at the very same time of year hatchlings are usually emerging from the eggs, the females are at the start of their reproductive cycle for the next year and will be test digging, and they're more likely to dig in mounds they've used in the past. This is a scan of a diagram done by Dr. David Carter, who studied lace monitor reproduction in the wild for his PhD many years ago. The diagram shows overdevelopment at different times of the year, and you can see that the female is undergoing patelogenesis at the very same time of year that the previous season's eggs are hatching. So if wild lace monitors test dig in the same way that captives do when they're at the start of a cycle, they'd be digging the hatchlings out. Getting back to our list of signs that a female has started a reproductive cycle, you may notice something, and if you haven't, it'll become abundantly clear later in this video series. And what I'm talking about is this. These signs of patelogenesis, such as loss of appetite, enlarged belly, hanging in unusual postures, and test digging are pretty much identical to the signs that a female is gravid, much later in the reproductive cycle. Now this is a trap for young players, for it's not uncommon for people to notice a female showing all these signs, assume that the pair had been mating when they haven't been looking, let's say they're away at work during the day, 
and the females therefore now gravid, so they separate the pair before they've even started mating. There are, however, ways to tell a female undergoing patelogenesis from a female getting ready to lay eggs, and I'll cover this in a later video on egg laying. There's one last sign I want to cover here, which will help to seg you into the next video. It's an obvious one that we would expect when the female is starting a reproductive cycle, and that is the male suddenly showing interest in the female. And one of the behaviors shown by the male that the female has entered a cycle is slow, methodical tongue flicks, usually around her head. or her back. And if the female is truly going through a reproductive cycle, she'll tolerate it rather than run away. If you look really closely at the male while he's tongue flicking, his pupils will contract with concentration. In addition to tongue flicking the female, the male will also spend ages tongue flicking areas where the female has been. So let's look at some video of this. Here you can see the really short robotic tongue flicks. Now watch the male's pupils contract as he tongue flicks. It's worthwhile noting here that there isn't always perfect coordination between the male taking an interest in the female and the female responding accordingly. Sometimes the female may give off pheromones to attract the male before the hormones telling her to mate have fully kicked in. And at other times the female's hormones may have kicked in before she's giving off pheromones to attract a male. So she's the one that's interested, but he is not. Regardless, it usually works out in the end and leads to this. And that's going to be covered in the next video on courting and mating. However, before we jump ahead with that, let's go back to the beginning of this video. I've explained what's happening inside the female during vitelogenesis and the external signs which may indicate this is going on, but the big question some of you may be wondering is how does one trigger vitelogenesis in a captive female monitor? The answer is quite simple, food. Developing eggs require a fair bit of energy from the female, so most species will not enter a reproductive cycle until they have enough stored fat to cope. With lace monitors, it's fairly easy to trigger a reproductive cycle. As I winter them, not long after I warm them up in spring and have given them a couple of small meals to get their bodies used to feeding again, I then give the female as much food as she'll eat on a daily basis for around two weeks, at which point she'll have started a reproductive cycle. In fact, for female lace monitors kept indoors under controlled conditions, it has been almost exactly two weeks, 14 days, from the first meal to the start of the reproductive cycle. But what if you've got a species of monitor which you are not wintering, which is the case with most monitors? In that case, just go from normal or even slightly reduced feeding to an intense period of feeding her all she'll eat, and usually that does a trick. This even works after a female has laid eggs. Because females often go without food when they're gravid and are very hungry after laying, giving a female all she'll eat after she's laid a clutch of eggs will usually trigger her to go straight into a second reproductive cycle.
Again, for lace monitors, this is usually 14 days. As long as you support the female with a lot of whole food and don't overdo it by getting her to produce too many clutches each season, she'll produce a second clutch without skipping a beat and with no effect on her health. Well, I hope you've found some of this video useful. If you're enjoying this series so far and want to be notified when the next video is uploaded, please click on the subscribe button and make sure notifications are turned on. The next video, part five, is going to be about courting and mating. Now we're getting down to the meat of the matter, the nitty gritty, the hanky panky. Mm, shake that thing, huh? Some kind of wonderful. It's definitely going to be unsuitable for work, but hopefully you'll learn something that you didn't already know from that awkward high school biology class, or that time one of your parents tried to lock you in the bathroom for the big talk. Until then, cheers. <laughs>